dynamics. We're looking at people, especially the vulnerable, the women, uh, persons with a disability, our young people. We are focusing on ensuring that the voices of these people are heard in the country. A lot of times, you know, it's not it's not usual for you to see a person with disability, for instance, in the cover of a paper or have their focus on the front page or as headline news. But it's important that the media gives voice to these people because they are equal citizens of, of the country. And we're looking at issues of accountability, media independence, uh, governance, and we're doing investigative stories. What they have got said, you know, finding trouble. So this, this project supports um, organizations. We're building capacity. We are also training journalists you know, for the work that the media does. And we're collaborating to defend our democracy. So when an organization, for instance, publishes a story past the organization is in Borno, and the, the owners of the organization are not able to have, uh, for instance, a, a platform, uh, a digital platform that is well known, the organizations cross-publish themselves. So one person can take a story on Borno and republish in Lagos, and republish on their platform that perhaps has 100,000 followers so that the voices of the people are heard. So we're doing many levels of collaboration at the level of the partners and at the level of the other partners that we work with. This project is um, supported by the MacArthur Foundation. As a roundup, I'd just like to emphasize the critical place of the media by reading a quote by Nelson Mandela. He says, a critical, independent, and investigative press is the lifeblood of any democracy. The press must be free from state interference. It must have economic strength to stand up to the blandishments of government officials. It must have sufficient independence from vested interest to be bold and inquiring without fear or favor. It must enjoy the protection of the Constitution so that it can protect our rights as citizens. So the work that the African Foundation for Young Media Professionals is doing is important. And it's particularly important because it is focused on young people. Any plan for the future, for sustainability, that does not include young people, is dead on arrival. Because you are the ones that will carry whatever we're doing forward. You are the ones that will pass the pattern to the next generation. So it is very important that your, this program is focused on young journalists. And as you know, you know 70% of our population as a country are under 30, and 42% are under 15. So it is important that we all work together and that we make this profession good. And I thank Mr. Igor Leiter for, for creating leadership in this, in this regard. I'd like to just end by you know, encouraging everyone here. When I got into journalism in 2005, I've been 17 years working here, I, I found um, a group of journalists that, that I thought looked, they did not look like my vision of journalism. Everybody who knew me as a young person in the secondary school was sure I was going to go into journalism. Because I had always been passionate and about it. I was in my school press in secondary school. I led the writing, we wrote about our teachers, if they did not talk, teach well. We had pseudo names so that we did not get beaten. And then we exchanged notes to use our handwriting. So if the story is mine, I'll give it to another friend because the teachers knew our handwriting so that we can confuse them a bit. But when I got into journalism, I realized that my vision and my, my, the image I had in my head of journalism was quite different from the reality. People were despondent. People were, they were low. They were, they had very low morale. It looked like they couldn't make anything out in life, so they came to journalism. And I, I felt it was an aberration of a vision that I had. But I had a mentor that for long we me, published at Premium Times and founder of the Wallace Center for Investigative Journalism, who was to me an epitome. Interestingly, today is his birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Who was, who was to me an image of what I thought journalism should be? And so rather than go into the everyday reporting, I decided early to go into development journalism to boost the morale of the profession, to tell people that this is a noble profession, this is an important work to do. You know, the president sits, the governor sits, you sit, 
That is what is called a fourth estate of the realm, just like constitution and the executive, the judiciary, you know, and the legislature must do their work. As a journalist, you must do your work. It is that important. So this is not a profession of losers. It's a profession of high flyers. The profession of people who care enough about society to hold people accountable. And when people ask me what is investigative journalism, I always like to tell them, I like to tell you what it is not. It is not witch hunting. We're not after anybody. We're not after every individual. We're after a better society. So yeah, if you're on the side of a better society, if you're on the side of truth, then go together. But if you're on the opposite side, oops, then maybe we're after that. <laughs> you know? But it's not it's not individual, it's not personal. So this is an important profession. And I know there are very young people, many young people in this room. Very important profession. Hold it up, hold your head up high. Everything is not about money in the bank. And this it doesn't make you probably does not make you, you know, Jeff Bezos or you know the richest person in, in the world. But but it pays it pays your way. If you're content, you'll be fine. This job takes care of you if you take care of it. So I encourage you all to stand up to defend journalism, to defend the truth, and by so doing, defend our society. Thank you. That's a powerful one. Put your hands together for again. Very powerful way to end the other. You know what I said? Uh, the only said that it teaches us to go for trouble. Um, she got the blessing. <laughs> she got the blessing because she just Maybe pretend it doesn't happen. And then they say, uh, and I was driving into my state, I was a CSO. And the man was pointing at my car, he was saying, she, she does not have sticker. She, she, she does not have the sticker. I packed properly, unlocked my vehicle, came down, and I walked back to the gate. So I said, okay, please, the sticker. I must have sticker. And when I have sticker, I must paste it on my car. He said, mm, you, do you know that I have the right in my apartment to sleep? Saturday morning, the choir is doing choir rehearsal until 2 p.m. And they are using speakers. Ah. In the evening, you know, I say, okay, then women will now come this afternoon. That protects me from this kind of noise. You want to say which law? I say, okay, that's the problem. GM, Lagos Television, designing. Please put your hands together to me. My brother, Mr. Mulesi, who is standing for the Honorable Commissioner for Information and Strategy in the last day. And also, my sister, Mrs. Montonayo Alaka, uh, the Deputy Director of the Revolution Inca Center for the Physical Journalism. My other sister in the house that has been looking forward to me, Mrs. Bukwala. The young journalists who are here this morning for this occasion, I am members of my SRI, the head of the department, UPM, election party, election and party monitoring, head of the department, ICC, head of the department, PAO, and the DPA. Today's function is uh, 
very, very important. And so many of these things. Number one, the current register of uh, voters in Nigeria, the Jews constitute about 76% of registered voters in Nigeria today. So it means that uh, if the Jews of this country are well organized, they can determine the next election of next year. There's nothing anybody can do. And the women too, is one point something percent of the register of voters. And given of the country's democracy at this crucial period, when the 2023 year election is just 109 days away, 109 days away, is very appropriate and therefore cannot be overemphasized. The choice of the topic for discussion is interestingly in tandem with the mission of INEC as an umpire, we state that lives unconstitutionally, unconstitutionality, citizen participation, is there for the rule of law, protection of individual and collective rights and freedom, as well as delivery of services to the people. These essential elements are the fundamental pillars which distinguish democracy from other forms of government. Indeed, the essence of democracy is that citizens must be able to ventilate their views through unrestrained debates and that there should be active citizen participation in governance as well as unrestricted communication between the government and the government. Idea 2001. A good fundamental is a sustainable democracy of, of a sustainable democracy is election. Election is a process through which the representation and aggregation of voices towards better